Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on finding a job as a software developer, a computer programmer. And the reason I'm making this video is that since I've been making videos about Java programming, a lot of people have asked me, how can I find a job as a computer programmer? And so I thought I'd put the kind of main stuff that I've gathered over the years into this video and give you some tips about it. So the first question that people often ask is, do I need a degree to get a job as a software developer? Do I need a degree in computer programming? And the answer to that is definitely no, you don't. I, I don't have a degree in computer programming and it's never held me back. If you do have one, it's going to help you tremendously or make things a lot easier and employers may well take you a little more seriously. But you, you don't need a degree in software development to get a job as a software developer. And I've, I've also worked with um, people who don't have degrees at all. And uh, so it's less common because um, what ha tends to happen is that people tend to get degrees, at least this is in the UK and uh, the US, I suppose. And then they sort of look around for what they can do and they're interested in computer programming so they get a job as a developer. So most people tend to have degrees in their industry but there are a lot of people who don't have any degree of any kind at all so it's not a necessity. And by the way I should mention that this um, tutorial it's going to be a little bit centred around the UK, um, Western Europe, USA and Eastern Europe because these are the places that I'm most familiar with but if you're from somewhere else in the world then I hope you'll still find some useful tips in here. So you don't need a degree but it, it certainly helps. Do I need experience? Um, this again is a common question and of course the answer is no but experience is the big hurdle that you need to get over in order to get a job as a software developer. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my own experience later on in this video. But um, I, I got a job as a software developer originally with no commercial experience whatsoever, no proper experience. And I did have a degree, but it, it was a degree in science and it was the worst grade of degree that you can possibly get and still call it a degree. So you don't absolutely need experience but it really helps and if you don't have any experience and you want to get a job as a software developer there's a bunch of things that you can do that will help. And that the simplest thing is, is just um, firstly let's say you are going to need to know how to write software that's the first thing to say because uh, trainee positions, even if you can find them, and they are probably few and far between, it will just give you a huge advantage over other applicants if you already know some computer programming. So that's the first step, learn how to program computers. And if you don't know, then you can find um, a sort of semi-complete free um, extensive video tutorial series on www.caveofprogramming.com and I'll give you that URL a bit later as well and that's my website and there's also a bunch of videos on there this is a little promotion if you don't mind for my other courses um, at least one of which is free and some are paid on like web development and Android and stuff like that so first learn to program computers really well if you can as well as you can anyway and it is difficult at first but if you hang in there you'll get the hang of it. And it will help if you've written some computer programs of some kind yourself, even if it's something you can take in on like a pen drive and show to people. And I remember when I first started applying for jobs, it took me a while. I, I managed to get a few interviews um, by moving to a place where the IT industry was thriving, that was Cambridge, UK. And I started to get a few interviews and I, I used to take um, a program that I'd written with me like a little fractal program to show people and that was all I had um, and I could talk about other programs that I'd tried to write even if they weren't very good when I'd written them and that was something 
if you can write programs and sell them that's fantastic because that is commercial experience of some kind you know it's it's it, it is technically commercial experience and that's what employees are always looking for commercial experience and that's the barrier to get over so again you don't absolutely need it but if you can get it even by selling little bits of your own software even if you're selling some kind of little thing that you wrote using PayPal and your own primitive website for like one dollar or something um, a time, a copy, then that is some commercial experience and it's better than nothing. In fact, it looks really great on your CV. Um, other things you can do to get experience is, let's go to a browser here. There are, are a bunch of sites like, for example, www.guru.com and um, these are places where you can bid for contracts, you can bid for work that people want doing. And uh, if you're not, if you're from somewhere other, if you're from a Western European country or you're from the USA, then you tend to find people from other parts of the world where the economy is not so good, undercutting you with the bids. So it's not so easy to make a living on here, I think. I think people spend a lot of time bidding if they want to make a living and um, nevertheless some people even in the USA do make a really good living on here by being very busy and uh, it's useful for you if you want to get a job because if you can get any kind of paid work at all even some small thing like correcting a WordPress site or writing a little I don't know Python script or something then it's it's really better than nothing. It's some commercial experience that looks great on your on your CV. Uh, so anything you can do that you could call commercial that you get paid for is really good. And if you can't find anything to do, then even just having some software that you've written that people can find on a website or something is still better than nothing. And one thing that I haven't actually written down here, but I should have said is make sure you've got a, uh, a good CV. Make sure, even if your CV has no relevant experience on it, make sure it's nicely formatted. List what you consider to be your key skills, the things that you've learned about computers and programming. Write down any computer programming that you've done uh, and put down anything that might sound good on that CV as long as it's true. Don't lie on your CV. But if there's anything you've done that can sound good, even if it's quirky, and put it on the CV. And I've put some really eccentric stuff in the past on my CV, and I've got interviews sometimes as a result of this. Um, so uh, as I, I'll explain shortly, I actually lived in a tent once for more than a year, and I put that on my CV under like hobbies and interests. And I actually got interviews because people were just curious to meet the person who lived in a tent. So anything you can put on that makes you look good, like if you were head of some society or I don't know, you know, um, you worked in some job, even if it's nothing to do with computer programming, but try to make it sound good and put it on your CV and make sure it's nicely formatted and emphasize the software skills that you've acquired from just doing stuff at home. And that will all help because this is the barrier. This is a key barrier that you will have to get over your lack of experience in getting a job if you haven't got any experience. And if you have, then you're singing because as soon as you've got experience, then just by sticking in there and being persistent and possibly being prepared to move, then you should be able to get a job, I should think. Okay, um, let's, let's go back to the presentation. I don't know what I'm doing here. Here we go. Okay, so do I need, do I need experience? Basically, no, but it, it helps. Um, and, and now I come to um, a strategy that I've kind of developed over the years. Um, I, I worked at firstly as a permanent person but um, and I held one job for like six years before I got tired of it and quit it for another job but I used to um, go from job to job because I could get more money by going to a different job and I just love change personally and after that I became a contractor so I've applied for a lot of different jobs and I've got a lot of different jobs and I've worked successfully for all increasing amounts of money in a long um, series of jobs. And over the years, I developed kind of a strategy that I would apply when I needed a job. And um, you need all the things that I said. So obviously make sure you've got a good CV, that's really key. 
and put anything on it that you possibly can. And once you've done that, it's going to take you, um, it would take me from start to finish, typically four, five, six weeks, something like that, to find a job, usually. And I'm, I'm prepared to move anywhere, or I was. Uh, now I work for myself. So if you've got anything that counts against you, like you're not prepared to move, or um, you don't have experience, it, it could take longer, certainly. But um, the strategy that I'm about to give you um, should help you in general. And my strategy is pretty simple, and it just centers around using jobserve.com. Let's go to a, a browser here. And if you're in um, a different country where jobserve.com doesn't have jobs, although I think it's pretty international, then um, you might want to look at a, a similar job site in your country. I'm not familiar with too many of them. But if you go to www.jobserve.com, and, and it's certainly this is certainly good for the UK and the US, and uh, there are definitely jobs in here in, for example, Germany, um, I've seen jobs, and the Netherlands as well, um, probably other countries in Europe, I don't know. I'm not sure about India and places like that, although I, sus I suspect they're in here, and we could search, and probably some stuff would come up. So, um, no matching jobs found, but that's because, uh, well, I don't know, actually. Anyway. If you happen to be in India, you might want to use a different site. I don't know. I think I'm searching Hungary, actually, so I need to fix that. I think there are Indian jobs on here. So uh, this this is a site that lists jobs, basically, and you can upload your CV to jobserve.com, and there are other sites like this, as I say. And once you've uploaded your CV, you can make it searchable by recruiters and employees. And at least in the UK, and I believe the US and Europe, most jobs that you get will be via an agency. So you'll be sending your CV to agencies and hopefully they'll start contacting you and they'll go to the employers and um, they, they will find you a job. For, uh, and they will, they will usually be paid, they will be paid by the employers themselves. So don't give, um, don't give money to the recruiter, obviously, that would be crazy. Um, the employers will, will pay the recruiter. So you'll be gonna, you're gonna basically be approaching recruitment agencies, but you can do it all through a site like this one. So you can upload your CV to JobServe, and let's say you're looking for a Java job. So I'm gonna search for Java in keywords, and um, I've got this set on some kind of annoying setting. Let's go to here, consider another country. And let's take, for example, here we've got a whole list of different countries here. And let's go to the United Kingdom, just as an example. And here we go. And I don't know what other jobs there are there. Maybe this is a complete list, um, I don't know, uh, of countries, I don't know. Anyway, um, so what I would do is um, I'd, I'd look, you can search for jobs um, within different salary brackets and the different types of jobs here. It's good for permanent and contract, and usually you start off as a permanent person and you can become a contractor and make much more money after two or three years if you want. And you can sort these jobs by the, the latest one, so you can see the latest one that's come in, rather than sorting by relevance. And uh, what I do is, um, I think by default it searches for jobs in the last seven days. But I'd, I'd search every day if I wanted a job. I'd search for jobs in here, and I'd sort them by the latest job so that I can just go down the list. And to start with, I just look for all the jobs I possibly could that looked interesting. And by using one or two clicks, I'd send off my CV. And if the form allows you to um, send some other information to the agency, sometimes it's worth putting a little note in there or even emailing the agency as well through JobServe, because you can do that, and just um, explaining a bit more and just trying to come across as really enthusiastic or whatever. But the basic thing is keep keep looking at this site, and the first time you do it, just look for anything that could be appropriate. And if you haven't got the right skills or experience, consider positions like test positions or even data entry, 
but positions which could contain an element of computer programming or which um, jobs where you could possibly automate certain things using computer programming because you're just trying to look to get your foot in the door to start with and even if you get a job that isn't a software development job if it if it allows you to do any element of software development or even in your existing job if you have one maybe then that gives you commercial experience which then looks fantastic on your CV so think around the kind of edges as well and then once you've applied for everything you can um, that seems like it might be appropriate I would say every day just search um, for the particular skills that you've learned or that you feel you know and sort by the latest vacancy and look at all the ones that have come in that day and it might take you a while to go through but you'll get quicker and quicker as you get more practiced at it and just spend like half an hour or an hour or two or more I don't know however long it takes going through the latest jobs and um, applying for any that look appropriate and I, I find for some reason often I don't hear anything back for like two weeks it's like silent for two weeks you'd think that the world had been destroyed in some sort of apocalypse for a couple of weeks but then after that um, you'll, you'll tend to start getting calls from agencies at least if your CV looks credible and uh, once they start calling you that's a fantastic sign because if they start calling you you'll probably end up with a job if you just hang in there and it might take a, a few weeks to get them to start calling you but as long as you, your CV does look credible and you've got software even if it's little programs at home that you develop then they'll probably start calling you eventually and um, hopefully you'll start getting interviews and don't, don't worry too much about the first interview so you'll probably get calls after a few weeks let's say at least a couple of weeks and, and during that time I will be looking at this site every day and applying for anything that seems appropriate and you keep doing that till you get a job or at least that's my strategy anyway and it's worked for me and then they start calling you and eventually hopefully you'll start getting interviews and if some of the agencies are a bit snotty and they say oh you can't get a job without experience or you know um, something like that don't listen to them because they all say this kind of thing and in a way it's in their interest to discourage you because then they're the only kind of connection that you have to getting a job they don't want you contacting other agencies but don't take any of this nonsense um, if you want a job like learn to program and then just get one and eventually I think you'll get one um, so uh, don't take any nonsense from these agencies but of course be very nice to them because they will help you and most of them these days um, are very helpful uh, and eventually you'll start getting interviews and then don't worry too much about um, a particular interview because if you don't get it don't be crushed by it or anything like that because see it as a numbers game the more interviews you get the better you get at just talking and presenting yourself uh, even if you find it very difficult at first and you're racked with nerves you'll get better at it so hang in there and see an interview as just experience and relax try to relax and eventually you will hopefully get a job from doing that so it's a question, it's really it's a numbers game uh, make sure all your applications are quality applications and you're applying for stuff that you think you might get and try your hardest at interviews try to be nice and present yourself well to the agents don't get discouraged, keep in there but remember that it is a numbers game and often a lot of people are applying for one job but if you present yourself well such is their demand for software developers it's ever increasing it seems you will get one eventually if you're persistent enough and if you even vaguely know your stuff at all so that's kind of my strategy for finding work uh, which has always worked for me and finally I just want to tell you my own story which may encourage you I don't know um, but um, I, I did a degree in physics um, and I just got horribly discouraged with that degree um, because I I don't know I just, I just got sick of studying and I don't really like being told what to do I like being free and independent and at one point I dropped out of my degree and I said I, I, I moved into a tent 
and I said I was going to go and look for gold in the hills of Scotland. And there is some gold there, honestly, but um, it's very difficult to find. Some people that I came across found a small speck, and my eyesight was so bad that I, I couldn't even see this alleged speck of gold. So anyway, to cut a long story short, I went back and tried to finish my degree, but I didn't have enough money, and I got the worst class of degree that you can get. So I had a degree in science, but I was living in a tent, and I, I had a terrible class of degree. I didn't know anything about computers either. Um, someone had taught me to send emails, and that was all I could do. And then, um, a bit later, somehow it happened that um, I miraculously had a girlfriend uh, in spite of living in a tent and she said that she was um, going to buy a computer and I said like why would you want to do that buy a word processor they're much better this was in 1997 I think but she did buy a computer and I just I had time on my hands because I didn't have a job and I was actually applying for cleaning jobs and doing all kind, trying to do all kinds of things and having no luck even with those and I started playing around with the computer and I just got intrigued with its possibilities. And I thought, if I could write a really good game, because I, I came across like QBasic, which was part of Windows back then. And I thought, maybe I could write a game, a computer game, and uh, sell it and make loads of money. And I kept trying to learn programming. And at first, it was really, really difficult. And I, I had such trouble with basic concepts. I looked at so many different books, and I kept jumping around trying to learn this and that. And I kept thinking, oh, I should give this up, it's too hard. But I kept at it. And um, after a while, I started, things started to become gradually clearer. And um, after about a year or so from when I first started um, using a computer properly and trying to learn to program, I actually got a job in it. I came across a job. It was advertised as a trainee position, but I, I, I had also, I think, as far as I remember, I think I had interviews as well. Yeah, I did for other jobs that weren't trainee positions. So if you're just persistent, you can get some junior position eventually. And I was I was asking for the minimum amount of money that I thought I could live on, which at the time was £8,000, which was absolutely nothing. You have to really struggle, really try hard to find a full-time job in the UK, even in 1996, that paid as little as £8,000. And I remember one person who interviewed me said he thought that I was asking for 18 and it was a typo. And he thought that that was rather a lot of money. But eventually I got this job, which is a bit rubbish. But I left it after eight months and because I got a better job. Because by then I'd got commercial experience. So I, I, I got a job that paid more. And I carried on like that for some time, really. Um, I did stay in one job for six years. Um, but to be honest with you, I never liked working in an office. And most of my colleagues did like working in offices. They enjoyed the job. But I didn't because I'm obviously interested in computers. But I don't like just sitting there and being told what to do. I don't like sitting there all day. Or I don't like the stuffiness of an office. After a while, I pushed myself to become a contractor. Even though, actually, like for me, it was nerve-wracking and um, I, ha I had a, a lot of trouble just um, I'm, I'm not naturally a confident person and uh, I had I, I didn't know if I could even to start with I didn't know if I could even get a job I had such trouble presenting myself but I did and later on I became a contractor and um, that, in, that multiplied my income by like 2.5 times and actually I, I quit a job which I really disliked strongly and um, that I'd done for three months and uh, I tried to make a living selling paintings on eBay but I got sick of that it was, it was really hard to do and um, I can't really paint anyway which didn't help and then I got a job as a contractor which made me buckets of cash really and I did a few different contracts and my last one was for AT&T in Holland actually and then finally now the great thing about software development is that believe it or not and sometimes it is hard to really believe there's so many opportunities if you have software development skills uh, not only for working for other people but working for yourself and it took me a long time to work out how to do it and to realize this but you, you can actually just work for yourself in a variety of ways 
developing software it's just that again it takes a little time a little research and some effort and uh, after I'd been contracting for a while I thought I'd saved up some cash and I thought I I'm really sick of this now but I then had done like 13 years of working in offices and uh, employees were pleased with my work and I think I was pretty good at it but I, I wasn't happy and I wanted to work for myself so I quit I, um, I said okay where's the town in Europe where I'm legally allowed to live where my money will go the furthest and where I can enjoy being in a big town and that I decided was Budapest which I knew nothing about in Hungary so I moved here and then I started giving lessons first I was teaching English as a foreign language I just put ads in the local newspapers and people came to me for conversation practice and, and this I, I was someone who for a long time could barely talk to another human being you know so um, I, I was kind of improving through my experience of being a contractor and working and all this kind of thing and then um, and then I thought okay I'll teach computer programming and I remember someone someone saying to me is that something that people do teach computer programming through the internet which is my idea and I said no I just, I just thought of it and I really didn't know if it could work um, but as with teaching English via private advertisements I, I didn't think that would work but I was, always, I was forced to do it because I didn't have any income at that time and I either had to do something or go back to the office which I didn't want to do so then I started teaching computer programming and of course I'd, I'd taken a massive drop in salary to do this but I was a lot happier when it worked it was like a miracle I was amazed and I was teaching computer programming via Skype and then I started making YouTube videos to promote my website caverprogramming.com and um, and then someone said to me well you can sell subscriptions to these videos so then I started selling videos about computer programming and that's what I'm doing now so if you go to caverprogramming.com I've got a completely free course on Java programming there as I, as I think I said maybe and one on Java multi-threading and I've got paid courses on Android, Swing and web development and they all have some free videos in them and again this has increased my income again my income's increasing all the time which I'm very happy about and, uh, and the more I get into it the more I realise that there are so many things you can do with software and actually with the internet in general there's so much opportunity for making money it's just that uh, if you start looking into it from scratch you, you meet all these scammy people um, who are telling you to do this or do that and make £500 an hour or something you know and uh, it actually takes a while to build things up and um, there are genuine people in amongst the scam artists telling you how to do stuff and I just managed to find my own way and I've used the skills that I've got in programming now to make a living completely for myself so I'm completely independent I could live wherever I wanted really um, I, I, I do what I want I'm working on these videos for like an hour or a day or something and the rest of the time I'm doing other stuff so um, that's my story and um, if you're now you're at the point where you're maybe studying programming a little bit and you're wondering if it's worthwhile then if you enjoy the programming it's definitely worthwhile and if you don't enjoy it if you don't like programming then I would say look into using the internet to make money other ways um, because there are lots of ways you can make money through the internet okay so um, that's it from me um, and uh, check out my other tutorials and I was just thinking like if you do want to make money some other way on the internet I'm no expert on that uh, I was trying to think if there's any URL that I could give you and I came across a good site recently that was pretty good and I'm struggling to remember the name of it which is why I'm hesitating but I'll give you this URL just in case it's useful to you where are we if I could get, get the right browser window here it will help here we go uh, there's one called something like uh, simple passive income or something like that let's, let's passive income simple oh, the guy mentions his smart passive income yes yeah, so if you um, if you 
aren't interested in programming and yet you've watched this video I don't know why but and you want to make video you want to make money through the internet or even if you are and there's a lot of good tips I've found in this blog it looks a bit sort of by European standards it's a bit kind of very it's very American and uh, you think is this guy a scam artist but I've listened to like the first 10 of his podcasts and they're really really good and I do wish I'd known a lot of this stuff to start with so um, check out smartpassiveincome.com but first of all check out caverprogramming.com okay so that's it for this tutorial and until next time happy coding